yoga fam, Jessie here with some community flow on this warm and beautiful Sunday morning. I wanted to start by saying happy pride to all of my LGBTQIA plus family and um, to remind us that the first pride was a riot and that we wouldn't have any of our rights if it wasn't for a black trans woman. Um, so just to remember that when we're in this weird year with pride and with being together to support um, the Black Lives Matter movement um, from the lens of um, civil rights um, as a whole picture and not just one identity or another that separately needs uplifting and protecting, but that we need to take care of everyone if anyone is gonna be taken care of. Um, I'm a non-binary person, which is something I don't always talk about, um, and I've been doing some work with that recently, and I realized that I don't talk about it because there is still fear of judgment, that even as I'm able to hold space for other people who have similar identities to me, that I still don't always feel like I still don't always feel like I'm safe to be part of the conversation so like point blank because our identities aren't up for debate. It's not something I have to convince you of and it's not something anyone should have to convince anyone of. So I bring that up today just to say I love you and I'm here for you and being a person is a full spectrum experience. There isn't one way to be any kind of body. Um, and today we're gonna have like a full spectrum experience on our mat, um, and I hope that you have as much fun with it as I know I'm gonna have. So, let's come up to stand. If you've got any props, maybe a beach towel for a blanket or some books for blocks or some pillows, make sure they're nearby if you want them. And we'll come to stand in Tadasana, mountain pose. And take a few moments to get your feet somewhere that you feel like you can press down into the ground. I like to lift and spread my toes a couple of times and kind of shift the weight around. And when you feel like you get to a place where you can press into all four corners of your feet, try to use that to stand up a little taller. That just might be energetic. It might be um, a very subtle thing and you might actually be able to press into your feet and stand up taller. Either way, notice what happens in your body when you root into the foundation. If it's comfortable and safe for you to let your eyes close where you are, you could go ahead and let your eyelids get heavy. And we'll tune into the sound of our breath. It might feel good to take a couple of big exhales out, maybe even through your mouth or <sighs> fluttering the lips a little bit. <sighs> it might feel natural to start to breathe in through your nose or out through your nose. You might have a different way you want to breathe today. I encourage you to do what feels natural. See if you can fill all the way up in all four directions, or if not, like more than that, but side to side, front to back, maybe even top to bottom. Try to take up space in your body and then letting go of more air than you take in. <sighs> Keep pressing down into the floor and bring your arms up into the air just until you've reached the top of your in-breath, and then exhale your arms back down alongside your body. And let's see if we can have our arms be almost like a, like a little barometer or like a little, um, like the little ball of mercury in a thermometer to match our breath. So they only go up as big as the breath comes in, which could be a lot, and then they come all the way back down with the breath on the way back out. See if you can link your breath and movement. 
I have a cat scratching at the door. I'm going to let him in because he'll bother us the whole time. You want to come out, buddy? What can I say? The cat's like doing yoga with us. <laughs> I thought maybe I could like lock them out today. I was like, they won't bother me. That's not true. <laughs> Uh, and then the next time you reach your arms up into the air, keep one arm up and bring the other arm down your leg. I have my left arm up, right arm down, but you could do either side. Let your hips lean to the, if your left arm's up to the left, if your right arm is up to the right. And then switch sides however you want to. Arm comes up, hips go to the side, lean and breathe. Hmm. And then come all the way back up. Now just take a moment to notice what that did for your body. So when we ground down into the floor again, and we press into the four corners of our feet and stand up tall, how does it feel to breathe now? Hmm. Inhale, arms lift. This time, exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward, come all the way down, forward fold. And then move to the top of my mat. Hmm. If you want to have blocks or books under your hands here, that can help the backs of your legs, your hamstrings release. Hmm. You could play around with where the weight is going in your feet here and shift a little side to side or front to back. Hmm. And then inhale, lift and extend. Try to get your spine long. So don't worry about how high up it gets. See if you can hug your shoulders together, lift your low belly towards your back arm hits reach away from your hips and then exhale press into your feet fold back down a couple more times just like that inhale to extend and exhale to fold the same way we linked our movement to our breath just a moment ago try to do the same thing here let the breath leave the movement And then the next time you exhale, step back to downward facing dog. You can move your props out of the way. One foot back at a time, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. When you get into downward facing dog, you might want to bend one knee at a time and pedal up the legs. If you want to play with the, the length of your stance, you can come forward to plank and Make sure that the heels are over the balls of the feet and your shoulders are over your wrists. And then keep them in place, knees bend to lift the hips. Oh, that longer down dog might feel good. It might be too intense this early in class. Just feel around. And then come down onto your hands and knees, tabletop position. Reach your right arm up into the air, open the front of the chest. And then thread the needle, right arm underneath the left one. Right side of the head comes to the floor or maybe to your block. Left hand comes up on fingertips. You can bend your left elbow. And then reach your hips away from your head and try to even them out. So your like left hip might be coming up towards your armpit. Try to reach it back towards the back edge of the mat. That's it, one more deep breath. And then exhale, unwind, come back through center. <sighs> and just take a moment, maybe some cat and cow, maybe moving things around. We'll go the other way. Left hand lifts, open the front of the chest, and then exhale, reach under and through, and come into the twist here. So it's the same idea, but it might be showing up totally differently. Well, just remind yourself that your practice is a full spectrum experience. 
There isn't one way we're looking for it to be. A couple more deep breaths. And then unwind, come back through center, and find your way back eventually to downward facing dog. A <sighs> couple of big breaths. <sighs> come on forward to plank. Bring your shoulders over your wrists, hips in line with the shoulders. So we don't want our hips hanging low like this. And we don't want our butt up in the air like that. We want a tabletop spine. That's gonna require us to hug in from our belly, our side bodies, our low back. And then see if you can breathe back into that engagement like you were taking up all that space. Exhale, lift back, soften the knees. Let the head go. Downward facing dog. Hmm. Inhale, shift forward. Couple of breaths. Engage your inner thighs towards one another. Try to soften your butt, but then reach the top of your head away from your tailbone. Try to lengthen out through the spine. Exhale, lift back. Press the floor away. Soften the knees. Downward facing dog. Hmm. Inhale forward to plank. This time with the knees up or down, bend your elbows, reach your chest forward, lower all the way to your belly. When you get there, release the tops of your feet, press into the tops of the legs, roll your shoulders back, lift the chest, low cobra. And take a few breaths here to inhale, roll the shoulders back and lift, exhale, fold back down. So just a little cobra wave here. Maybe even rolling your shoulders out, or if you want, you could bring your fingertips wider side to side. Hmm. And then when you're satisfied with kind of moving the crepitus around in your shoulders, bring your hands alongside your body, tuck your toes, and press all the way back, downward facing dog. <sighs> Couple of big breaths. Hmm. And then take lots of little steps forward all the way up to the front edge of the yoga mat. Hmm. And when you get there, come into a forward fold. This time, option to maybe take your feet wider apart, or if you want to bend your elbows and grab opposite arm bones side to side, you can. Give yourself a little sway. A couple of deep, full breaths. Deep breath in. Long breath out. Inhale to lift and extend. Exhale to fold and release. Press into your feet, stand all the way up. Arms lift for the ceiling. And then exhale your arms down alongside your body. And we're back in Tadasana, back where we started. And so just take a few moments here. Press into your feet. Let your weight shift around. And just notice, what does it feel like to be here? What does it feel like to be in your body now? We're gonna stand on our left foot and we're gonna make some circles with the right leg. So I like to point my toe when I do that. You're gonna lift the knee and open it to the side. That might feel creaky crunchy. Uh -huh. and then we're gonna go the other direction. So you're gonna pick up and come in. Your standing foot might be doing things, your standing leg. So keep grounding down into that. And then release, press into the other foot. And we'll do that same thing. So first, just opening to the side. It might be really different than the first side. So just make it about watching this action in your body. And then go the other way. Okay, and then we're 
we're gonna alternate. So we're gonna pick the right leg up and come in, and then the left leg up and come in. We're gonna play around with finding grounding every time a foot is on the floor. So imagine Tadasana, try to balance by using your core stabilizer muscles. So that the core really means like from your shoulders to your hips, it means not your limbs. And so think about your whole center, like playing with gravity. Go the other way, open the hips. Whoa, that might be funny again. So again, just watch how balance is showing up for you today. Uh -huh. That's it. And then come back through center. Bend your elbows back behind you. Hug your shoulder blades together. Reach your fingertips back behind you. And then interlace your hands at your low back. If you can, press your palms together, put a little bend in your elbows, and try to hug the inner edges of your arms closer together. You can widen your collarbones that way. And once you get that action, it might feel interesting to lift your pelvis towards your ribs, draw your low belly up and in, and breathe deep. That's it. You can stay right here if this is doing something good. If you want, you can hinge at the hips, fold forward, add a shoulder rinse, but keep rolling the upper arms back. Notice if they're hanging forward. And when you're ready, hands to the mat. <sighs> Fold forward, take a couple of breaths. And bend into your right knee, step your left foot back behind you. Bend all the way into the right leg. Left hand stays down, right hand is gonna come up to your hip, your low back, maybe up into the air. Take a deep, full breath in. Exhale, hand down around the front leg. If you wanna grab your blocks or books, Bring them under your fingertips so you can press down into your hands. And then keep your legs where they are, but extend. Straighten the front leg, reach your right hip back, left hip forward. Bend into your elbows and fold over the front leg. Couple of deep breaths. <laughs> and then re-bend your front knee. If you've got the blocks, bring them with you out in front of your right leg and press down to come up into a standing split, Earth for Prasarna Ekapadasana. One more deep breath, and exhale, forward fold, let it go. Press into your feet, stand up tall, root to rise, this full spectrum between folding and standing. And then watch yourself fold back down. Every little spot along the way could be something interesting. Lift back up, bring your blocks with you if you've got them. Bend your left knee, right foot comes back, right hand stays down, left hand comes to the hip or up into the air. Open the front of your chest. That's it, one more deep full breath. And exhale, hands to the blocks or the ground. Reach your hips into the air, pyramid pose, Parjvottanasana. And just see, like, it's not about having the knee straight. It's not about having the knee bent. It's about feeling stretch on the backs of your legs while you find length in your spine. So take your time. A couple more deep breaths. And then leave in the front knee, bring your hands out, step up, standing split. And then fold. Press into your feet, stand all the way up, arms lift. And then big breath out, follow yourself back down, hands to the mat, move through your vinyasa. So even a vinyasa is a full spectrum experience. It can move fast, it can be slow, because what connects you to yourself depends on you 
and where you are. So you don't have to ever just do it one way. You get to do it as many ways as you are. We're gonna lift the right leg up into the air. We're gonna keep the hips squared to the mat. Hug your inner thighs together. Press back through your back heel. Hug your upper arm bones towards your head. And then keep your legs straight and shift forward, three-legged plank. Try to breathe into your back. Draw your low belly up. Draw your right knee into your nose. Press the ground away. Curl towards your leg. And then whoa, haul your right foot forward. Spin your back heel down. Come up warrior two. Whoo! It is an early warrior two, so the same way pyramid is a full spectrum, warrior is a full spectrum, you can unbend your knee as much as you want. I will tell you that when we explore the full spectrum of the front leg, when we get closer to our thigh bone being parallel to the floor, some of our hip flexors release in a way that they won't when the thigh bone is angled up towards the body. So when I practice this, I try to first focus on the foundation, my feet pressing into the ground. From there, I kind of notice what happens when I bring engagement to that part of the body? What happens further up the chain? From there, I'm trying to sit down. So not forward necessarily, but like straight towards the mat. The more I can engage the back sides of the legs, the more I'm able to reach forward and back and sit deep. Whew, how's it going for you? My legs are shaking, that's good. Keep the legs the same. Flip your front palm, lean your upper body back. Try to sit your right hip deeper to get more side body stretch. That's it, one more deep full breath. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back, take your vinyasa. So decide this full spectrum you experience. Do you want it to feel heat building? Do you want it to smooth things out? Do you want to feel held? Where are you? We'll meet up and down dog. Left leg lifts. Stretch your leg back, but keep everything the same. So it's almost like, you know how a Ken doll only moves his leg in one plane? That's what we're going for. Hug your inner thighs together. Press into your hands, hug your shoulder blades together. Draw your belly up. Keep everything long and strong. Watch yourself shift forward, shoulders over the wrists. Whew. That's it, draw your knee into your nose. Round your upper back, hug your shoulders, and then ugh, left foot forward, right heel down, come up into warrior two. So the thing we have to remember is that we're gonna be different side to side. There is like the full spectrum of you that exists is fully accessible albeit in different ways, in different poses and sides of the body. So instead of trying to jump right to where the other side was, see if instead you can show up where you are now. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to justify this leg to the rest of the body. You get to just feel and be. That's it. Hang in there. Soften what needs to soften. Charge up what's gonna support you. And then keep your legs the same. Flip the front palm. Reach back, Radiant Warrior. Keep sending your hips down as you lean back to get more side body stretch. And then exhale, hands to the mat, step back. Move things around in a way that's going to connect you to yourself. And take a couple of deep, full breaths. Ah, this down dog can be a neutralizing place, almost like a home base. 
And that can be hands and knees or child's pose or puppy pose if that's gonna feel more like home to you. Bring the inner edges of your legs together to touch. Bring your big toes together if that's comfortable. Hips lift up. Come onto your tiptoes and drop your heels to the right. One option would be stacking your feet. The other option would be staggering your feet. So you can kind of decide which one works best for you. Either way, lift your hips in the air. Hug your inner thighs together. Stretch the side bodies. Both hands are still on the mat. And then come back through the middle and over to the other side. <sighs> Try to press the mat away. Try to lift your hips up. <sighs> and then come back through the middle. Lift your right leg, hug your inner thighs, shift forward, three-legged plank, draw your knee in, pull your right foot up, back heel spins down, warrior two. Arms open wide, try to sit a little deeper, find that full spectrum a little quicker. <sighs> Flip the front palm, lean back, radiant warrior. This time, press into your right foot, extend your right knee long, and reach forward and out for triangle. Trikonasana. Right hand finds the ground or the block outside of your right leg. Left hand comes to your hip or up in the air. That's it. Lean your chest and shoulders back. Think about that modified revolved lunge, the way we leaned behind us. That's it. One more deep breath. Exhale, left hand down, square things up. Spin up onto the ball, thank you Leonard, of the back foot. Chest and shoulders come over the right leg. <sighs> Rebend your front knee. Try to keep your hands where they are. This will be challenging. Bend into your front knee. And see if you can come up into standing split. You might have to move your hands a little but just notice, like, what's available with this different place to ground? Draw your left knee in towards your nose. Bring your hands up in front of your heart. Oh, and come all the way up to stand. Bend your left knee. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Standing Galavasana. Sit the hips back. Ooh. It might feel good to just stay like this. You might want to fold forward over the front leg, or I have like a shelf here I'm going to put my arms on to get a deeper stretch. Ain't no shame in making everything in your house props. <laughs> and then bring your hands back in front of your heart if they moved. Unhook your top leg. Nice and slow. We're going to come through warrior three. So pause with your leg and torso parallel to the floor and see if you can very gently, very gently, step your left foot all the way back and come up into crescent lunge, just for a moment. Bring your left hand forward, right hand back, twist open, chest and shoulders rotate to the right, and then bring your left hand to the floor, right arm up into the air, spin up onto the outer edge of your back foot option to step the foot halfway down for a modified side plank or keep lifting your hips stack your legs vashisasana lean your chest and shoulders back one more deep breath exhale hand to the mat move things around tape your vinyasa whatever connects you to you find your breath See if you can breathe into your entire body. Take up the shape you're in. And then lift your left leg. Hug your inner thighs together. Hug your arms towards your head. Draw your low belly in. Shift forward. Three-legged plank. Draw your left knee into your nose. Round your upper back. Step your left foot forward. Back heel spins down. Warrior two. Come on up. Flip your front palm, reach back, radiant warrior. And then press into the front leg, extend out long, and reach forward and out. Triangle, trikonasana, 
Try to keep opening your top hip over the bottom one. Almost like you were gonna like press your belly on the wall to your facing. Keep leaning your chest and shoulders back. And then exhale, right hand down. Square things up, pyramid pose. And then here's our little trick. So press into your fingertips a lot. I, I like turning them the other way for this. I don't know if that's like cheating or something, but do whatever you want, really. <laughs> Bend into the front knee, press down, lift up, standing split, urd for prasarna, eka padasana. And draw your right knee into your nose. Bring your hands up in front of your heart. Come all the way up to stand. Bend the right knee. And then cross your ankle over the left leg. Sit your hips back. Standing Alavasana, standing pigeon. Whew. Again, you can stay right here. You could fold forward. Do anything that feels good. Bring your hands back up in front of your heart. Engage your core. So think about those leg lift, like stirring the pot actions we did. And see if you can watch your body balance itself as slow as you can, quick as you need to. We'll come through warrior three, torso and leg parallel to the floor. And then how gently can we place the back foot back and come up into crescent lunge? That's it, right hand forward, left hand back, open the front of the chest, and tip your right hand down, left arm in the air. Option one is staying here. Option two is spinning whoop, the right foot down and bringing your left foot halfway. Third option is plank, side plank. Hips lift, chest opens. Lean your upper body back. One more deep breath. Exhale, hands to the mat, move things around. Couple of deep breaths. And then come down onto your hands and knees. If you're not already there, grab your blocks or books, or if you've got like a stool or a chair that works, like this thing could work, like this little ottoman. You're gonna bring your forearms onto whatever you've got that's height. And then walk your, hip, your knees back so your hips are over your knees. Armpits lift, middle of the shoulders hug and melt. <sighs> Try to every couple of breaths, engage through the armpits to let that middle of the back soften more. <sighs> and then come back up. We're gonna step the right foot forward. We're gonna keep the back knee down for an Anjaneyasana with an option to add more quad stretch for the front of the thigh. So this low lunge might already be plenty of stretch for the front of your back thigh. In which case, you could back bend a little, you could just play around with what that feels like. If you're looking for more, quote unquote, more stretch, you're gonna bend the back knee and lift the foot and find your foot with either one or both of your hands. Oh, balance will be a challenge there. Wherever you are, back your butt up towards your back foot, roll your shoulders back, and then try to keep your back the same, but bend the front knee a little deeper. Oh, ah, that should be a thing. Nice job, folks. One more deep breath. Exhale, release your foot. Bring your hands to the floor or to the books or blocks and extend your front foot, toes up for runner's stretch, Ardha Hanumanasana. So in this pose, think more about pyramid and how it was okay to have a bend in the knee because we wanted to feel stretch behind the leg and get length in the spine. So whatever that means for you is good. And then lift your chest, re-bend the front leg, and 
can switch sides however you want to. You can just shake your back leg out. You can come to down dog. You can flow. We'll bring our left leg forward however you want to get there depending on where you were. Anjaneyasana, second side. So all of the same options are here, but this is a different you. This is the left leg you. And so we have to locate ourselves again. We're never gonna be a binary. None of us, in our bodies, in our hearts, or in our lives. It's never just one way or the other. There's always this expansion and contraction, period. There's always expansion and contraction. And so when we think about showing up in a yoga pose and filling up into ourselves, we have to make sure we're not filling up into the idea of ourselves or the idea of someone else. And that we're really being with who we are in the moment we're in. When you're ready, we're coming into runner stretch. I like to keep my hips over the back knee to start here and try to lengthen the spine before I fold forward. That might not work for you, that's okay. That's it. Give yourself a couple more deep, full breaths. And then re-bend your front knee. Move the props and find your vinyasa. We're going to meet up and down dog. Bring your right foot forward, warrior two. Spin the back heel down, lift up. From here, flip the front palm, lean back, radiant warrior. Extend out through your front leg, reach forward and out into triangle. Try to keep everything open to the side. Your top hip's gonna wanna close. <clears throat> Excuse me, try not to let it. If you wanna bring a hand to the block here, I, for what we're doing next, I like to have one, so maybe you grab your little soup can or whatever you've got. Bring your left hand onto your hip. Keep it there. Roll your shoulders back. Charge up the muscles in your legs. Bend into your front knee. Bring your right hand out about a foot in front of your right foot. See if you can stay open in the side body as you lift your back leg. Roll yourself open. Half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. You could stay right here. You could lift the top arm. If you're interested, you could bend the back knee and find your foot with the hand for a little uh, chapasana. But either way, just remember that simple balance we did in the very beginning of class and notice all the subtle ways your body shows up here. When you're ready, as slow as you can, we're gonna bend the front knee, use your core, lift from the low belly, step your back foot back, come up warrior two. Nice and controlled. We're gonna straighten the front leg, turn your toes to face me, quote unquote, or like the long edge of your mat. Interlace your hands behind your back. Roll your shoulders. Whew. Fold. Wide-legged forward fold with a shoulder rinse. Try to lengthen your spine, hug your upper arm bones together. And when you're ready, hands come to the mat. Move around a little bit here. Maybe some speed skater stretch or a twist. You might want to get your block over on the other end of your mat because we're just going to go the other direction here. We'll come back to wide leg forward fold, I promise. We're going to bend the left knee, turn your toes to the back of the mat, line your feet up, and come up into warrior two here. <sighs> How about you? I'm sweaty. All right, flip the front palm, reach back, radiant warrior. 
Lean your chest and shoulders behind you. Extend the front knee. Reach forward and out into triangle. Again, try to stay open. Try not to close the top hip as you bring your hand to the floor and your right hand to your hip. Know that whenever I say the floor, when I'm talking about the hands, there could be a block there. The floor is a full spectrum experience. <laughs> That's it. We're gonna try to keep open as we bend the front knee. Left hand comes forward. Keep rolling your shoulders back. Keep rolling your hip up. Oh, be mindful of whatever furniture you're coming up near. Open up into half moon. Again, all those same options live here, potentially. That full spectrum of maybe, it, like it depends. Because it always depends. That's it. When you're ready, release your top leg. And very slow, use control. Try to use your core muscles to bend the front leg. Step your back foot back, come on up and then spin your toes towards the long edge of your mat, wide leg forward fold. <sighs> Take a few breaths here. It might feel good to walk your hands forward like down dog and reach your hips back. There might be some other variation that's calling your name. <sighs> And then we're going to walk ourselves up. You're going to walk your feet in to come into a squat. So you want your knees and toes to go in the same direction. And you can always have your elbows on your thighs or a block under your butt. Whew. See if you can sit your hips down, but reach your spine up. So that same sensation we had in the very beginning of class with Tadasana, grounding into the feet to get taller. And then what happens in the middle? What happens when we lift the low pelvic floor up and roll the shoulders back? What happens when we tuck our chin a little and breathe a little deeper? And then this will be fun. You're just gonna check for cats depending on where you are and just uh, fall back and sit. Okay. We're gonna bring the bottoms of our feet together and our knees apart. Hold on to the outer edges of your ankles and see if you can sit up taller. So now think about whatever's touching the floor like it's your feet. Uh huh. Maybe the more you press down into those places, the more your hips kind of just get out of the way. Try to sit up tall, draw your low belly in, and then bring your arms up overhead. Keep pressing your feet together, engage your core. Lift your low belly, hug in, and like you were passing a beach ball to someone. Keep your chest and shoulders lifted, keep pressing your feet together. You might not go very far. As soon as your back starts to round, lift up again. And then come all the way back up. Hands come down. Extend your left leg. Keep your right leg bent knee inside. Inside, I don't know. One arm to either side of your left leg. This might be a deep twist. So again, think about sitting up tall. All twisting comes from extension and rotation. So the taller we can sit, the more rotation will be available to us. So if you're looking for a direction to go, that's the one I'd say. As you're ready, feel free to crawl yourself forward and fold over the front leg. That's one option. Another option would be reaching your left arm down your leg and opening up with the right arm over your head or on your hip or over to your left foot. And then come on up. We're gonna switch sides. So left leg bends, right knee comes extended out to the side, left, right leg long. And then one arm to either side of your leg, sit up tall. Try to sit down through your hips. Lift your low belly up and in. And then see if you can rotate more towards your right foot. 
That's it. Hands crawl forward. Spine gets along. Maybe you're opening up into that side body variation. Maybe not. It's all good. And then come on back up. Bring both legs wide side to side. Upa Vishta Konasana. Wide, seated wide leg forward fold. If you want to change that stance, help yourself. If you've got your blocks or a bolster nearby, I like them in this pose. We're going to start by sitting up tall. Flex your feet. Put a little protective bend in your knee and try to squeeze your heels towards your butt like you were going to scrunch up your yoga mat. Arms come up overhead. Should be some stuff. See if you can lift up higher, even as you press down more through your legs. Root to rise. This full spectrum of both grounding down and expanding out. Hinge at your hips. Start to pass the beach ball. Again, when you feel yourself start to round, maybe the hands come to the blocks or the forearms or elbows come to something. Maybe you pass that beach ball all the way to the floor. Wherever you are on that spectrum, find a place to stay and breathe. Every couple of breaths, you might want to extend more and then fold a little deeper. You might have already found your depth. Start to walk yourself back up. Whew. Ooh, it might feel good to just shake out the legs a little bit. Uh -huh. We're gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee for a seated pigeon. So in your seated pigeon, your bottom knee could be totally extended or bent. You could also pick up the bent leg and either hold it between your elbows or some people like forearms under the shin. We'll just move the leg around a little bit. I like to get real creative with this and move all kinds of ways. You could not do that if you want. Uh -huh. And then switch sides. Ooh, shake it out a little bit. We'll cross the other leg. It's my left ankle. It could be different for you. Bend your knee if you want or keep the leg straight. Again, you can pick the bent knee up and move around that way if that's serving you right now. If it's more hassle than, than good stretch, I wouldn't worry about it. <sighs> Well, then go ahead and release that. Oops, sorry, George. I scared him. So we're going to come seated. We're going to come lying, lying down. We're going to do it with some core engagement. So you're going to bend your knees and put your feet on the floor. You're going to bring that beach ball up over your head. From here, plug your shoulders in. Lift your low back towards your legs and then draw your belly button in. Your hands could stay up or you could start to lower down as slow as you can, quick as you need to. Keep pressing into your feet. Arms could go all the way up overhead. Oh, and then come down onto the floor. Oh, just take a couple of moments to rest and breathe. It might feel good to shake out the legs a little bit or hug your knees into your chest. <laughs> Keep your right leg in, lengthen your left leg down on the floor. Make some little circles with your right leg bone in your hip socket. And then hold on the back of 
your right thigh and extend your right leg up towards the ceiling. A little supta pada bhustasana. Stretching our hamstrings helps release the low back. So it's like never a bad idea to throw one of these in when you're starting to wind down at the end of class. If you have long arms or long hamstrings or a combination of the two, you can always hold your foot or if you like a strap, you can grab a strap. If you wanna open to the side or take the outer leg stretch, help yourself. And then release the right leg. If you're still up to that, we're just gonna do the second side, so don't rush if you're interested in what's going on there. We'll meet up with the left knee and start with some of those motions like we did standing, just to explore how the femur, this big thigh bone, is fitting into your hip socket. And then hands behind your thigh. Extend your left leg up. And all the same options are there if you wanna you know, play around with your grip or the variation you're offering yourself. Deep breath. <laughs> when you're ready to release your left leg, shake it out a little bit. You could bring your knees into your chest for one last symmetrical pose or maybe take happy baby. We're setting up for Shavasana, our final relaxation pose for class. So if you want a blanket under your head, a bolster under your knees, any other props to get comfortable, help yourself. You could lie in any position you want. So on your back, on your belly, on your side, seated on a couch. <sighs> Give yourself a few rounds of deep breath. Exhale <sighs> all the way. <sighs> we'll take a few minutes to just rest and be.
notice your breath. And tune in to the full spectrum of experience that is your inhale and exhale. Notice how when you tune in, you can take up more of that spectrum. You can embody yourself completely. Gently start to wiggle your fingers and toes or stretch up long from your hands to your feet. Bring your knees into your chest and roll over to one side. And pause there for a breath or two. And here on the floor, take a moment to thank and honor yourself for tuning in to who you are. For finding space for that exploration. Use your hands to help yourself up. Or find an easy seated position. You can let your hands rest somewhere comfortable on your legs, in your lap, somewhere in front of your heart. And thank you all so much for sharing movement and connection today with yourselves, with each other, and with me. Thank you for helping me feel safe enough in my vulnerability to be who I am. And thank you all so much for feeling safe and being who you are. Showing up when you can, how you can. And when you can't, when it doesn't feel safe to be vulnerable, know that I'm holding you there too. That that is a full spectrum experience. And whatever you've got is enough. Hail yourselves, yogis. And have an awesome rest of your day. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. Whew, I'll see everyone soon.